Rice and beans is arguably one of the best combinations of food. Today's dish is my take on jollof rice. To be clear, this dish is not originally made with beans or pulses as part of the marriage, but if you want a ceremony that is easy, budget friendly, and pretty much takes the cake, this is it. Jollof rice is a West African delight. Most of the color of this dish is derived from obeyata, or fried pepper stew, which is the name for the base. All over West Africa, there's these variations of this spicy rice. And if you're looking for the originators of this dish, my understanding is you would head over to Senegal and connect with the Wolof people. Today, we're gonna talk about how to make this dish brief substitution options, and some tips, tricks, and considerations along the way. So the dish starts off with a pepper stew that mostly comes together in a blender. Then it's reduced to compact just layers upon layers of flavor. Into the blender, we go in with our tomatoes. Then you can add in a yellow, a red, and orange bell pepper if you have it on hand, along with a spicy pepper of choice. We went with scotch bonnet. For my tomatoes, I went with a fire roasted option. Sometimes in this recipe, you'll find folks will roast their tomatoes and their bell peppers prior to getting them into the blender. And because we were looking for more of an easier version, we actually skipped that step got some fire roasted ones and they taste perfect. You actually can do that very same thing with like a can or jar of fire roasted red bell peppers. Shame on me, I didn't have any red bell peppers, but trust me, it's good in there. Actually, shame on the grocery store. I mean, let, let's, let's get this right. All of the spiciness of this recipe is going to come from the pepper or chili of choice. Scotch bonnet peppers are a bit spicier than your jalapeno or habanero but also they are a bit sweeter. And that little sweetness from the pepper adds a, a bit of an essence that you can just not find in most other peppers of choice. For the absolute most impact of flavor, pull the stem off, toss it right into the blender. For a little less punch, carefully de-seed the pepper prior to getting it in there. And lastly, for a milder taste, you can choose a different pepper, add only half of the pepper, or add none of the pepper. Quick pro tip, blend this up, sit it in the fridge, and let it sit overnight. Or make a big batch of it, put it in some ice cube trays, sit it in the freezer, so that way, next time you need it, it's already ready for you. But letting it sit overnight will let the flavors do like the flavor thing. Those who eat leftovers, you know what I mean. Moving forward with the recipe, you could either have added your onions into the blender by now, or get some oil into a skillet, drop those onions in, and let's start cooking. Go for caramelizing if you want like a more deep and rich flavor. Otherwise, simply soften your onions before you move on to the next step, which is adding that ginger, the garlic, and your spices. Once your aromatics are aromatizing. I don't know, but the word sounds official. From here, you're going into the recipe with that peppery stew and veggie bouillon. Have you ever boiled or simmered tomato sauce? You see, it doesn't, it doesn't actually boil. It kind of pops. So keep your lid close and on as often as possible. Otherwise, wear a black shirt, some lab goggles, and although your kitchen is downstairs, be prepared to clean the ceiling of your upstairs bathroom. While cooking this stew, you want it to reduce to about two cups, which is almost exactly half of what you're gonna put in there. It's gonna be important to make sure that step is fairly concrete before you move forward. The rice I used was basmati brown rice, and I wanna make that clear because not all rice is the same. For example, basmati brown rice can be done somewhere between like 30, 35 minutes cook time. While your typical brown rice would take somewhere between like 45 and 55 minutes. It really doesn't matter what rice you choose. Really, it only matters that you understand your rice cooking window and that that cooking window doesn't really mean squat. <laughs> I say that because once you get your rice in there, and your veggie stock, then you go ahead and you stir and you let it simmer. Your cooking window may be that 35 minutes, but maybe you went to go check your rice and there's still liquid in there. If that's the case, you did not mess up. What you need to understand is the laws of ricinating. 
making up so many words this time. Basically what I'm saying is you need to understand how rice cooks in general. You know what, here's a tip. If you need to uncover your rice, just do it quickly. Identify if water is still in there by tilting the pot sideways and see if it runs up the wall. Obviously, if you have a lid that is glass or see-through somehow, then that would be just perfect. You don't have to uncover it all. If you still see liquid, just give it additional time and allow it to simmer until that liquid evaporates. Once that happens, the rice magic actually occurs after all of that. Once it sits off the heat, covered up for about 10 to 15 minutes, allowing that rice to simply steam with the residual heat under the cover, as long as you did it fast enough. As far as substitution options, um, pintos, lentils, chickpeas, all great in this dish. Couple quick tips to help you out. Pickled red onions tossed underneath that rice cover right before you let it steam for that 15, 20 minutes, trust me, this will make you really happy. And if you like spicy food, but it is really hard for you to eat because your mouth is just on fire the entire time, this is really nice served with avocado. One, because avocado is a healthy fat, it's going to help you absorb the nutrients in the dish. Two, avocado neutralizes spiciness almost instantaneously, like better than other spicy, neutralizing recommendations. This full recipe can be found linked at my website, makeitdairyfree.com. Thank you so, so much for watching. I truly appreciate you. Until next time, believe in good. Peace.